Hello and welcome to another slice of Daily Bread. I'm so glad that you have joined me today. Today I want to look at a popular verse found in the Bible. But before we begin, let's open with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day that you've given us. We thank you for your precious word. And as we look at one text here, I just pray that your spirit will be our guide. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, there's several verses found in the Bible that are pretty popular. And if I name several of these verses, most of us are familiar with them. Some of us can recite most of these by from memory. And uh, so let me give you some of these verses. John 3, 16 and 17. Most of us know that one. Or Micah 6, 8 or Jeremiah 29, 11. Romans 3, 23. Romans 6, 23. Or Matthew 4, 4. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Philippians 4.13, Revelation 3.20. All of these verses are fairly popular, and most of us can recite these verses. But there's another pretty popular verse that I want to take a look at today. And that uh, verse is found in John chapter 14. And actually, it's verses 1, 2, and 3. And this is what it says. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions, or some versions say rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. This is a wonderful promise that God is saying that he is going to build a house for us in in heaven. And that if he builds that house, he's going to come get us so that where we are or where he is, there we can be also. You know, this scripture took on new meaning in my life just recently. Many of you are familiar or maybe some of you aren't. But let me just catch you up on the story of my daughter and how that whole situation played out. My daughter was born at 26 weeks. She was basically three months early. And because she was so early, she had to spend time in the neonatal intensive care unit in Seattle, or as is affectionately known as the NICU. She was at the University of Washington Medical Center there across from Husky Stadium in Seattle, Washington. Now my wife uh, stayed with her. We had a hotel room not far from the hospital where Gabriella was. And so my wife stayed there to help take care of her throughout the the time that she was there, but I had to come home, I had to work, and so every Sabbath morning I would get up, I would go to early church at the village church. As soon as church was over, or early church, I would get in my car and drive to Seattle. I had Sabbath school study hour usually recorded so I could listen to that on the, on the way over and several sermons and stuff, so I, I kept myself occupied as I traveled to Seattle. But This I did every single week. I got used to the road, and it's to the point where that as I drive to Seattle, I know which turns I need to take. I know which corners I need to slow down on. I'm pretty familiar with the uh, the route between here, Walla Walla, and Seattle. And it, it was as my daughter was in Seattle, she was in the NICU, that my former boss made a comment to me, and it really stuck with me. It was kind of a strange comment, but yet at the same time, it made sense. And what he said was, think of how much you want your daughter to come home and be with you. Think about that, how much you really want that to happen. The Heavenly Father wants us to come home even more than that. I had a strong desire at that time for my daughter to come home so that I didn't have to make these trips constantly every week. You know, as I thought about that saying as that comment, I wrote a devotional that I did for Daily Bread here a couple months back, a devotional called Come Home. And it was looking at this uh, concept of how I wanted uh, my daughter to come home and how much more the Heavenly Father comes wanted us to come home. And so I wrote the devotionals called Come Home. And it was the story of Gomer and Hosea and how the Lord really wants to bring us home. You know, you can view that devotional on our website. 
If you go to Blue Mountain Television's website at bmt.tv, we have a host of programs from Valley Viewpoint, Worldview, and Daily Bread. And you can watch these at any time you want. Just go to the website and click on the video link at the top and find the video called Come Home. And this devotional is kind of part two of that concept. Because as I thought about that concept, yes, I want my daughter to come home. But as I thought about it, I wasn't ready for her to come home and she wasn't ready for, to, to come home. So what does that mean? As I sat there and I thought about that, I thought, okay, she isn't ready to come home. I'm not ready for her to come home. What can I do so that she will be ready to come home? And I thought about it and, and the circumstances, the way that she was born, it was kind of quick and sudden. We didn't have a nursery or a place for her to stay in our house already. And so I was like, well, we need to have a place for her so that when she does come home, she has a place to stay. So I thought about it. We have a three bedroom house. We have the master bedroom. We have a guest bedroom. And then the center bedroom in the house has been turned into an office because we didn't need the third bedroom. And so I thought, you know, we have kind of a half unfinished, just a cinder block basement. We could finish off part of that basement and move everything down there and make that her room. So I talked to my wife and she said, yeah, that's a good idea. So I talked to my dad. He was the maintenance director at Upper Columbia Academy for over 17 years. And so he, every house that I have ever lived in growing up, every house my parents have ever lived in has always been remodeled in some way, shape or form. So this, this little construction project was right up my dad's alley. And he, so I told him what we were thinking. He's like, yeah, I think we can do that. So we went downstairs, we figured out exactly what we were gonna do, how we were gonna wall it off in a certain way. And then we built uh, studs all the way around that room that we were gonna build. We built a little bit of a subfloor. And then after we got all of the walls in, then we put, uh, pulled some electrical in it so we knew wh where we could have the electric electricity where the light switch was going to go and those types of things and then we put up drywall then it was mudded and taped and then we painted it and then after that was all painted and ready to go we hung a drop ceiling in there and it looks really nice put some ceiling tile in we brought some old some leftover carpet from the remodel upstairs we put the carpet in there and finally that room was ready and so we went upstairs, we took the desk apart, we took the computer apart, carted that all downstairs, set it all up downstairs, took the bookcases and everything and moved those downstairs as well. Now we had a room that we could start with for Gabriella to stay. So we, uh, we bought a crib and we bought a mattress for the crib. But before we put that in there, we cleaned up the room, got all the dust out, mopped, really cleaned the floors, made sure it was ready. We put the crib in, and then uh, after that, we got a dresser so we could put some of her clothes. There's a nightstand and a lamp. There's a, there's a bed for whoever's taking care of her can stay in there. And then we had a rocking chair in the corner. And then since we knew at that time that she was gonna be coming home with oxygen, the rental oxygen company came out and they put the tanks there and the things that we could use so that she could get oxygen. So finally, finally, the room was all ready. And then I got the call that it was time for Gabriella to come home. So on March 9, 2016, I made the drive to Seattle. Now, I left at an odd time, and so I hit rush hour, I uh, hit traffic at rush hour. That's when I got to Seattle, and so it was 5 o'clock. And it took me from 5 o'clock till 6.30 to get through rush hour traffic there in Seattle. But I got to her room. We emptied out the hotel room that right night, and on March 10, they discharged Gabriella from the hospital. We went up to Seattle Children's for a couple quick tests, and then we made the trek home. And finally, we were able to bring her home. It took about seven hours because we had to stop every so often to make sure that she was doing okay. They wanted her to get a break out of her car seat. But we finally, finally brought her home. You know, as I think of this story, and I think of these verses that we're looking at, here it says 
that the Father is building a house or a room so that the, you and I can stay there. I feel like the Father here and that I created a room specifically for Gabriella so that where I was, there she could be. And when all things were ready, I came and I got her and brought her home so that where I was, there she could be also. And our Heavenly Father is building a mansion. He's building a room for you and for me up in heaven. He's got it all prepared and he says, if I'm preparing it, I will come again. And if I come again, I will take you to myself so that where he is, there we can be also. Friend, I'm looking forward to that day when Jesus comes back to this earth to take us home. He has promised that he will, and so I'm going to hold true to that promise. And so, friends, let's, let's look forward to Jesus' soon return. He is coming. He has said he is coming. And so let's hold fast to his promises. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, you have promised that uh, you are building a mansion. You are building rooms for us up in heaven. And you have promised that one day you will return and take us home to be with you. Lord, we can't wait for that day. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.